is electric. Hi everyone, welcome back for another energy update video. Uh, it's the 1st of September, so time to give you an update on our solar and energy usage statistics for the month of August 2023. But before I do, time for a little bit of an update. Um, this month for me, um, apart from the weather changing, has been all about kitchen, 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 kitchen. It's everything's about our kitchen refurbishment that's going on and I've uh, basically had enough of it now. It's been going on for three weeks and we're going to be into our fourth week next week and it's still ongoing. For us, it's been hell living out of our spare room, washing up on a table outside, not being able to go shopping because we've got nowhere to put the shopping, etc. So living off pub food. I've had enough of it. Um, I want our stuff back in the kitchen. I want my spare room back, which is full of my solar and uh, video gadgets. So it's very hard to find everything to even get this video sorted. It's even hard to get my mind around uh, what I'm doing with this video, where my concentration is elsewhere. My concentration is all about the energy side of things. Will I be able to get a new Shelly um, energy monitor on the consumer unit for the kitchen plugs? The kitchen plugs for the oven are now behind the unit, so I can't get a smart plug on it. I can't turn off some of the things that I used to turn off overnight, so I'm going to have more standby. Some of those things are bugging me because I haven't got that detail right, but the reality is I'm changing everything thing in the kitchen and therefore I can't have it all the same. So yeah, anyway, my world's been turned upside down here just because of a kitchen refurb as uh, I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but the uh, drills and saws have started up again. But I look forward to sharing hopefully next month my first energy update from the new kitchen. Right, so what else has been going on here apart from my kitchen refurb and the big thing I suppose is the weather. Who's got the big duvet out yet? It's getting pretty cold overnight. Um, I've noticed last week uh, overnight temperatures dropping to about 8 degrees C here, here in Norfolk. I really hope this comes out well and the microphone cuts it out because the soaring... <laughs> yeah, it makes you wonder what they're cutting up. Anyway, uh, what was I saying about the temperature? Yeah, down to 8 degrees. And yeah, we've put the big duvet back on the bed and it's just really changed, doesn't it? There's dew on the grass. Um, I was noticing Cracker out running the other morning. And you can see his breath. Um, you know, we haven't seen that before during the summer. So things have changed rapidly here in Norfolk. And autumn is upon us. And it doesn't feel long now before we'll have our first frost. But you never know. Maybe the weather will change again. We'll have a mini heat wave in September. I guess stranger things have happened. So I haven't actually looked at my statistics yet. This is the introduction that I'm filming. And what do I think is going to be the case? Well... We've had a lot of days like this where it's been dull to start with and um, you know, grey in the sky, rain overnight, even rain in the morning. And then it's brightened up and had some sunshine. So I'd guess we're going to have less generation because it, we've had more rain. We've had more cloud. But I don't really remember any terrible days. Um, it seems to be because I fill the stats in every day um, on my spreadsheet. I don't remember filling out a day less than 15 kilowatt hours. So maybe it'll average all out because we haven't had any terrible days. It'll be very similar to July. To July. But uh, in honesty, I'm expecting it to be less. But let's find out. Let's find out what the stats are like for the month of August. OK, here's the main chart then. All three of our solar arrays combined into one. And this is the total amount of generation per day for the month of August. Peaking at that looks like about 48, 49 kilowatt hours on the 21st, 22nd of August. And I was wrong. We did have one day under 15 kilowatt hours, just over 10 kilowatt hours on the 5th of August. But when I look at that, I can see um, lots around the 25 to 30 kilowatt hours and then quite a few peaks up to 35 and 40 kilowatt hours. So yeah, that's plenty of production. No wonder it was 1,051, but really, really close to last month and really close to last August as well. This chart from Solar Edge showing the monthly total of 303 kilowatt hours for our 2.4 kilowatt array on the Solar Edge inverter. That shows the story that it's so, so close to last August. The full comparison of all three arrays for the different Augusts from the previous years. This sort of shows if you look at the right hand side, 527 versus 529, 304 versus 303, 227 versus 219. All three arrays very, very similar. In fact, though, our 529 was higher than last August, but we're only down slightly 
just because of our third array. So it's my solar panels on the garage roof and the east-facing gable ones. That's the array that's uh, giving me lower generation this month. But so, so close. So I think if you summarize all that solar-wise, it's just an average August, isn't it? That's what it looks like. Nothing to see here. Same as last month, same as last year. But same old, same old. Never gets old, does it? That's five months in a row we've had over a megawatt hour of generation. Five months in a row we haven't used any grid import to charge our car, heat the hot water, provide uh, all the electricity we use in the house. We haven't used anything from the grid apart from the bits that slip past uh, that we can't avoid. Hopefully September will be the same, and then October's the month that, well, will we or won't we? Just to complete the solar generation, this is the 3.6 kilowatt Solus inverter, 3.9 kilowatts of solar panels, and we generated 529 kilowatt hours. The other Solus array, that's a 2.5 kilowatt inverter with, what was it, 2.9 kilowatts of solar panels, but because of the facing, etc., we never get more than 1.4 kilowatts out of them, but that's 219 kilowatt hours for the month. With that much solar generation, we're of course not going to be using very much energy from Octopus. We're on the Octopus Go tariff. We spent £13.77, including the standard charge, for the 5.27 kilowatt hours that we consumed. And notice the Octopus app has a new feature as well now. So as well as saying 5.27 kilowatt hours is what we consumed, it also tells us the estimated cost is £2.02 £2 for that amount of electricity excluding the standing charge. Our energy usage of all that wonderful solar energy hasn't changed much this month. Uh, the Eddy is at 76.8 kilowatt hours heating our hot water. That is down a fraction, less washing up that we're doing, less hot water. The Zappi, 276.5 kilowatt hours. And the home usage, that's pretty similar as well at 302.2. I guess we're down a bit on cooking and up a bit on power tools. The rest of our home usage is looking pretty consistent to other months as well. The Zappi 276 kilowatt hours, as I said. The Eddie's recording a slightly different number here in Home Assistant, 76.75. Air conditioning, so that's our cooling of the house, 58 kilowatt hours. Our second fridge, 26 kilowatt hours. The Internet Hub, 17 kilowatt hours. That's including the My Energy Hub and all of our mesh routers as well. The TV lounge, what was that? It was about 16, 17 kilowatt hours. The microwave's not really the microwave. That's actually our third fridge that we're testing to see if it's as efficient as the other one. And the oven and hob there, that's reduced because we're not cooking as much. So looking at the Victron statistics, which are, again, a slightly different. Every app shows a slightly different number if it's using a different CT clip. We uh, import from the grid 2.3. We brought in from the battery 118 kilowatt hours. From solar, 492 kilowatt hours we used. Total consumption, 612 kilowatt hours. Obviously, what's left out of the 1,051 kilowatt hours that we generated... That's what we exported. I think it worked out to be 413, according to one of the other apps. More good Victron data here. So the top of this chart again, the blue area chart at the top, that's showing our battery usage. The more it dips down to zero using the right-hand scale, the more battery usage we're using. And as you can see, there's only one day where we dip down to 55%-ish. The rest, we're staying well within uh, our battery capacity, not using more than 30% overnight. And finally, here's a temperature chart showing the five sensors that I'm using with Home Assistant. The lines in the middle, they're the internal temperatures for the house, and that's between 19 and 22 degrees. And the loft temperature and the garage temperature is showing me how cold it goes down overnight and how hot it gets during the peak of the day. These temperatures, they're going to start to reduce, aren't they? Hope you enjoyed that. I uh, hope there's some good statistics there for you to compare to and to think about if you're thinking about installing solar. Uh, let me know in the comments below or what sort of system you've got, what sort of generation you've got, whereabouts in the world you are. Yep, there's people in the comments from all over the world uh, posting what their generation is. And we're extremely jealous of those on a more southern hemisphere that are getting more sunshine than us. And I guess our friends down under are heading for summer while we're heading for winter. So, yeah, it's very interesting to see uh, how generation works in different countries and different areas of the country as well. So I'd, I do like to see everyone's statistics and uh, how you're getting on and what your systems are like in the comments. 
Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. And just before I go, let me know in the comments also what you think of the video quality and audio quality of this video. I'm actually filming it on a, a new tablet that Doogie have sent me. So I'm going to be doing a review of this Doogie tablet, just a short one, and also the latest uh, phone that they've sent through, which is an S110. And I think this tablet's an R10. It's a ruggedized um, tablet, but the video quality and the camera positioning Everything about it does quite well for actually filming, so I'm hoping this comes out quite well. Let me know in the comments. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Take care. See you again soon for more videos. Bye for now.